I actually asked them, where would I play if I was to play on an AFL team? And they said, you'd be the stalker. <laughs> I said, I don't know what that means. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was like, now I'm laughing a little bit, but does he know what that means? Because I don't know what that means. Play by Play on Sports Joe and Her. Brought to you by AIG. In support of 20 by 20. The final of dreams or an absolute nightmare, it remains to be seen. I'm Neve Meyer, I'm the producer of Play by Play. Jenny Murphy is not feeling the best today, so she's taking a break. Don't worry though, she will be back next week. Let's get down to the good stuff though. I'm joined on the panel this week by Mayo footballer Neve Kelly and writer with Sports Show, Niall McIntyre, lads. You're very welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks for having me, Neve. Um, so obviously we have to talk about what happened at the weekend, so we're going to talk about the men's match in a little while. But first, Neve, your team was achingly close to making the All-Ireland Finals after a defeat to Galway. So it was massively historic in so many ways because it was the first time that the semi-finals were on in Crow Park. Yeah. But obviously to lose in a one-point match must have been pretty heartbreaking. But how were the team feeling before you went out? Yeah, it was, like I said there, it was obviously the first time ever to have the semi-final in Crow Park. So that was, there was obviously a huge hype going into the game. Um, so I suppose we were all obviously very excited, very focused on the game ahead, but we knew it was going to be tough because, you know, it was our fourth time playing Galway this year and, you know, Galway are an excellent side. Um, we got to replay like in the kind of final with them. So we knew it was going to be very, very difficult. So, um, yeah, leading up to the game, yeah, we were quite nervous, I suppose, coming into a semi-final, but like we were, you know, raring to go as well. And, you know, it was a very tight game. It was obviously very disheartening to lose by a single point like in, in the semi-final, but... Do you know, I suppose it's only this week now that I'm looking back and, you know, there's a lot that we've learned this year. We've a lot of new girls that came in this year too. So there's a lot of positives we can probably take from the year too. So um, it's obviously very disheartening now. Yeah. But yeah, we've a lot to learn too. Do you look back straight away? Because I feel like this is something that, you know, obviously with the men's match at the weekend, they're going to have a replay now in a couple of weeks. After a match like that, do you step away from it for a while before you go back? to kind of analyse what you've done or straight away are you like, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. Or what could I have done better? Yeah, straight away after the game, like you just, you know, it's obviously very disheartening. You're very distraught. Um, it's only kind of this week I'm looking back and I'm analysing our year, yeah. you know, and going through probably, you know, everything that went on this year. But yeah, straight away after the game, like it's, it's you know, it's very hard to take, obviously losing yeah. the semi-final by a point. But um, yeah, we're looking back now, you know, we can we can build on it for next year. Um, hopefully, you know, Peter, our manager, Peter Lee, he's been out the championship yesterday. He was out looking at girls for next year to come in already for next year. So, you know, we're already looking at next year. We have to try and, you know, move on from it as well. So, um, yeah, it's very hard at the minute. Like, it'll take yeah. a while to get over, obviously. But, you know, Galway are a great side and be a good final now against Dublin. Yeah, it's funny because I said it to Niall that you were coming on the show and the first thing that he said was, oh, some goal. And the same thing, I was saying <laughs> it to Conan as well in the office, some goal. So it seems like Neve Kelly now is just associated with some goal. Just tell us about the goal already. <laughs> we could have got a few more. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, really. I just kind of saw the open and kind of went for it, really. I was, yeah, just delighted it went into the back of the net, to be honest. We do have a clip of this goal, so in case you missed it, take a look. Sarah Rowe, pass and issue, not sports and issue, kept in the phone and Neve Kelly. Trowell A, Nisha Hagen, Sean Malloy, Trastner, a Hashi Fos, a Trowell A, Hashi Sportsica, Hashi Dinavista, Ervoide, Fosica, Eshel, Bartis and Anger, Kier, then Kier Scott, oh, kept in the phone, kept in, it's Beroid if we own Neve Kelly. Well, to Kohish and Teen, to Hijin, a Tussi, a Toy, Moyo and Chen, Beckham with Drip Rochi. Grace, Agus Neve Kelly, Achla Neve Kelly and Chen, Forshian scored there and I was going to create them and Chen to get La, Agus got Fichor and Chen because it was screen, Vishi on screen. So one of the headlines on the day after that was Mayo captain Kelly lights up All Ireland semi with stunning solo goals. So in Crow Park, what does that feel like to to get a goal like that? Um, I suppose I kind of treat every game like you know a normal game, I suppose and. Obviously, it was brilliant to be in Crow Park and everything like mm. that. Um, so there was that hype. But, you know, when you're kind of playing, you kind of forget where you are for a minute as well. So I kind of treated it as a normal game. It was obviously great because when we did, like, you could obviously hear all the supporters. Like, we had so much support up the last day, which is great. Yeah. So was it, it was ten, like, 10,000 people were at it? Yeah, they? yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, really, yeah. like, at the semi-final. I know, you know, Crow Park holds over 80,000. So 
you know, it wasn't full, but like that's a massive step for ladies football. Like, you know, yeah. we'd never have that at any other game and to have that much support there and you could really hear the, the crowd going as well. So, you know, it was it was a nice boost to have them as well. And support. you play with your sister. Yeah. Grace is on the team as well. Yeah, she is, yeah. And you play with your brother, right? Niall, yeah, tell really. us about your sport first well, off. Well, I play hurling in, uh, with a club in North Tipperary. Mm -hmm. We're uh, right beside the Galway border there, so... We're, we're Tipperary now, that's, that's, that's a definite. Um, we're playing the Tipperary Championship there yesterday. How did it go? And we lost. All we were, right. We were going great. We were up <laughs> by six points at half time, and we conceded three goals in the first half, but we were still going well. We conceded three goals again in the second half, so oh. we got caught out there. But yeah, I play with my brother too. He's the captain on the team. Okay. And um, I think it's great to be playing. A lot of people say it doesn't change when you're playing with your brother or your sister, but like, I think you're going to training with the person the whole time. Yeah. You're going to games. After training games, you're always talking about what went right, what went wrong, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, and even after the game there yesterday, we were disappointed that we lost it. But like, I think it's great to get stuff off your chest. And yeah. yeah. So he's he's your about. older brother. Yeah. And he's the captain. He's captain. Team, and yeah. you're the captain, and you're the older sister. And the younger sister. You're the younger sister. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, it's different. <laughs> What about the dynamic of that? I mean, have you and your sister always played together all the way up? Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, I think we came into the senior setup. we were about 15 or 16, but mm -hmm. yeah, we've always been playing together, uh, which is nice as well. And, you know, like I said, like we'd always be going to train together in the same car and bouncing things off each other. And, you know, how could I be better here? And, you yeah. know, what was I doing wrong here? How could I be better? So it's always great to like bounce things off each other and stuff like that. And I think you know, kind of know, like you play well with your sister. Yeah, you well. know what they're going to do. Like, yeah. and you'd be talking about it beforehand, I suppose, like different passes that you might give to them or different runs you might make, and just like yeah. you make a run there and I'll give you the pass or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's almost like you know their runs. Like exactly. Yeah. yeah. What so so it so sounds good. a little like happy families though, lads. You all get along and talking about how great you are. But what about arguments? Because I know I have a brother and <laughs> we used to play sport together. Um, obviously it was separate though. He was playing boys. I was playing girls. Um, but yeah, we would fight a little bit, but nothing like that. It's all constructive criticism. It's all behind closed doors. Ah, come on! <laughs> no one's going to see this. It's not being filmed or anything. Uh, Pretty camera. I know, to be honest, we do get on very well, obviously. There might be, you know, on the pitch, you know, the heat of the moment, you might be like, oh, get back there or, you know, cover there. But, yeah. you know, that's all on the pitch. Like, it's never given out. It's always kind of encouragement and stuff. And, right. you know, I think we do get along. My, my brother as well, the three of us get on well. There's just the three of us, but... um. Do you know, yeah, we kind of really get on well now. It's fine, absolutely. I think a lot of the time in games, like emotions would be running high, and you kind of you wouldn't be thinking straight a lot of the time. Like, and say if you didn't get a pass or if you didn't give a pass, you might give someone a bollock in life, but <laughs> still, you'd like it'd be grand by the next ball. Do you know, like is that, that just in the hype whatever. at the moment though? So you're like screaming at them on the pitch, yeah, but not you're necessarily. Exactly. If you're free and looking for a pass and you don't get it, like you might be a bit cross in in the heat of the moment, like. But you yeah. know. I'd say it's, even if, if it's your brother, you'd nearly give out even more or your sister yeah, yeah. because you wouldn't mind giving out to them. Like, but. And was it always football knee for you when you were growing up or were you involved in any other sports? Um, no, I think we, we kind of started whatever was going in school. Like we gave a go at soccer and basketball and Gaelic and we did Irish dance in there for a while as well. So, but I think like it was good to be able to, I suppose, play all of them. So you had a choice then when you got older. But... You had to really choose. I think when it came to under six, 16 levels, mm. yeah, we, we had to choose what sport between soccer and Gaelic. And like it was hard at the time, but you know, there was never really any question or much thought put into it because I knew it was always going to be Gaelic. But yeah. yeah, we started off with with the Gaelic. Like, see, as, as a child, like we would always been just kicking around outside, like playing around in the backyard and stuff with, you know, Grace and Sean and the uncles and stuff. But then like we played with boys, like right up until mm. under 13 level because there was no girls teams, you know, for, yeah. for the Gaelic. But um, yeah, it was, <laughs> we were just talking about it before, like we, we were just saying like, we weren't allowed into the changing rooms because the boys were, would be changing or whatever before a match. So, so wait, where did you change? <laughs> just like out the, back of the, out the back of the shed or something? My brother would go in and get our two jerseys and bring them out to us and we'd change in the car. No, it's not okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, we'd just go in for just a little team talk before the match into the changing room. But um. I you suppose know, it was good that you were able to play, though. I mean, obviously, you know, a female dressing room feels pretty standard now and definitely feels like it's warranted. But I suppose at the time you were just really happy to get the opportunity to play. Yeah, that's it. Like, and it was, there was obviously, you know, it was great competition as well, like to play against the boys. It was a lot more physical, like, yeah. and then we did transition into the ladies, like, 
you know, you had to take a step back because it wasn't as physical, you know, there was, yeah. it's non-contact. So it was good for, you know, that competitive edge as well. And it was a really good experience, obviously, to play with the lads too, because, yeah. you know, but yeah, uh, it was always, yeah, I played a range of different sports, but. Yeah. It's funny yeah. when you were talking about the dual sport element there and kind of having to choose yeah. one or the other. Like we've had a lot of people on the show who have kind of juggled dual sports, like to a really high standard. And I just mm. don't necessarily know like how they're able to commit yeah, it's, it's to every tough going thing, in terms of training and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but was it always hurling for you now? Anything else? See, I was massive into athletics when I was a youngster too. I used to do cross country running um, up until I was maybe 12, 13, 14. I Jesus, was, I was mad into for pain. It. What were you just like Jeez, a yeah, glutton was, for punishment? I don't know. I started off as a sprinter, like, and that was, I thought I was fast enough, but I was too slow to be good at that. So I suppose okay. I had to do cross country running then. And I just got big into that then for a few years, like 12, 13, 14. But then I suppose when you're getting older, the hurling was sort of taking over. And yeah. when you're with different panels and training and clashing on different evenings, you kind of, you have to choose at some stage. Like, so mm. I suppose the hurling really is massive in, in where I'm from too. So I was yeah. never going to. But I would imagine cross country running benefited hurling. Oh, definitely. Mm. Like I'd find if when you're going back now at the start of the year, training a lot of the lads would be dying unfit like and I mightn't have ran in a long time and you just get away with it like yeah. you just I be, hate be the running <laughs> like I hate running more than anything but obviously it's incredibly important when you're running around a pitch for the entire time yeah is it something that you have in your training that you have to yeah it's you know I suppose it depends where you're, you're playing on the pitch yeah. as well um do you know I suppose for a corner forward you wouldn't be running as much yeah. as you know wing forward or midfielder or wing backs so like I did usually play wing forward. There is a lot of running in it, like, mm. but yeah, you'd find yourself out the middle of the pitch more so than in the forwards. But yeah. I suppose you kind of get used to it as well. And yeah, I'd say the the long distance running. I should have went into that myself. Yeah. Probably would have helped. So you have an advantage, basically. That's yeah, why they're hitting, that's why they're myself. hitting you with hurls on the back of your leg. Exactly. Yeah, that's I still it. find myself Take getting caught. <laughs> you'd be caught a few times too. I play wing forward a lot of the time as well, and you'd be up and down the wing, and they'd be telling you to track back and mm. oh. It's not easy now, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah I would imagine. Um, <laughs> just getting back to Mayo a little bit. So in terms of the kind of year that you've had, um, obviously getting to a semi-final is amazing. Heartbreaking that you didn't make it to the final. But when you look back at, say, where the team was in July of you know 2018, um, it, I would say you've come on in, in leaps and bounds after, like, obviously, what which would have been a really difficult time mm -hmm. for the team. Um, where does the team want to go now from here, like moving forward? So obviously, you know, not making it to the final, a tough one. Mm. But what are you guys taking away from it to move forward now for next season? Yeah, I suppose there were so many new girls that come in this yeah. year. And like, it was a whole new experience for them. Like, and they just came in and adjusted and adapted to like a county setup. Like, and they'd never been in a county setup, a lot of them before. So, um, you know, they just, you know, put their head down, worked hard. And it was like, actually, you know, nothing phased them at all. It was like amazing, really, to be honest. But, you know, hopefully, you know, the league obviously was, our, our goal was to maintain Division 1 status. And yeah. we did that. But, you know, it was about girls getting games and stuff mm. like that. And they had that experience then going into championships. So, you know, we probably surprised ourselves at times as well. You know, you know, reaching a semi-final this year as well. You know, girls worked really, really hard. Um, and we never really expected that at the beginning of the year. Like, our goal yeah. was just to maintain Division 1 status. And then just take each game as it comes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very disheartening at the minute, obviously, you know, mm. you know af after losing last week, but there's four of us going away now next year as well. So, you know, Peter and the management are looking at new girls to come in already yeah. this year. So, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll start up. Because, I mean, when you, when you say there. things like, obviously I keep bashing on about it, you just didn't make the final. Good one, Neve. Um, <laughs> but, like, when you talk about getting new girls into the county setup, Neve McAvoy, who, who's on the panel quite yeah. a bit, she's spoken about that before and about, you know, the gym age of girls who've maybe come into the senior setup mm. at a much younger age um, and how that makes a massive difference to the game. Just Huge, yeah. even in terms of confidence, I would imagine, like, you know, Definitely, in yeah. terms of the girls that you're facing who've maybe been doing it for a lot more years. But is it just that the Mayo players are just more keen or they're not as scared or what what is it like um i know i just i know when we started off like there was no gym programs like you, it was up to yourself to kind of do that kind of thing yourself and you know obviously strength and conditioning is becoming such a huge part of the yeah. setup now and you know a lot of the girls they're they're doing that now at the underage levels so they're doing that at under 16s and minors and you can really see that coming through mm. so i think that's probably why a lot of the girls coming in were, weren't really phased by 
you know, the county set up and stuff, you know, because they yeah. were doing it underage. So, um, yeah, it's it's great. Like it has, it's came on so much in that regard, like strength and condition and stuff. And, you know, it's really important that, you know, you continue that on then into, yeah. into the seniors then. But, you know, that definitely wasn't <coughs> a part of it when we were starting off. And, you know, it's, it's nearly on par with the men now as well. Like we'd have the same strength and condition now as the men at home. Yeah. So we know that, you know, it's, we're, we've got the best strength and condition that we can have yeah. so that's a huge element of it now as well i would yeah. imagine as well it's all it's driving competition as well wondering what the other teams are doing in terms of their strength and conditioning and in terms of how much they're training yeah. can you talk us through like what a week of training would be for you like maybe in the run-up to a big semi-final in crowbar so we'd um we'd actually you know it'd be different you're you probably wouldn't be in the gym we wouldn't be in the gym as much as we would be if we you know at the beginning of the year so yeah a typical week we'd probably be in the gym twice a week and then trainings maybe three or four times but in the lead up to a semi-final you'd be tapering down you know you wouldn't yeah. be, we'd only probably have one gym session and then one or two you know pitch sessions as well so you do actually just taper down so that you're fresh to go like yeah. but yeah it's a lot different than when you're leading up to you know a big game you need to be fresh to get going and yeah. yeah. Now I see you standing up and stretching at your desk all the time. <laughs> so are you gonna yeah. are you gonna talk us through what your training regime is as well? Because well, uh, a man who stands up at his desk to do a stretch is a man who trains a lot. That's what I think. Well, I don't know. I just get sick of sitting down for too long. To be honest. Right. That's my only problem. Sports Joe, are you listening? Let's get standing desks for everyone. <laughs> I don't know if I've been to standing desks though as well. Maybe for just half the day or something. Yeah. Conan could organise it. <laughs> But no, you just uh, officially put in a request there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Asher, I suppose maybe you might see me doing it last week because I suppose it was championship week as well. So I was trying yeah. to keep myself fairly loose. Like I was actually nursing a bit of an injury too. So I was trying to keep that in check as well. So. And so do you travel back and forth for your... Of a Wednesday, yeah. Of a Wednesday for training. For training of Wednesday, yeah. I'd be going home Friday more most weekends anyway because yeah. I'd just be going home. I, a lot of the time I'd work from home at the weekends. Conan doesn't mind it, so... All right. <laughs> but, uh, Conan's not here now. <laughs> yeah. You can say whatever you want to say. This yeah. is an open platform. But uh, we'd be training at Wednesdays, Fridays, and then like this time of the year it's usually a game of a Sunday. Yeah. So. And do a lot of lads like... Cause it's kind of a commitment, isn't it? If you're living mm. in Dublin and you're working in Dublin, having yeah. to get back down. There's a few of us up in Dublin, so yeah. like we'd share lift down, like it might be every second or third week, lads would drive down and, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, but mm. I yeah. don't mind going home. You get The mother would have a dinner ready for you when you get <laughs> home as well, so can't complain that way. Absolutely, can't complain. <laughs> um, right, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the moves that you and your sister are making because you are going to be going to the AFLW, which is incredible. Um, following the likes of Sarah Rowe and Cora Staunton as well. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. And also, I want to talk about the All-Ireland Final predictions. Uh, for the ladies, I want to see how you think that's going to go. But obviously, at the weekend, there was the All-Ireland Final. Um, it's funny because I went to the live recording of the GAA Hour, which is another show that we have here on Sports Show. And, uh, you know, they were talking about the match and they were talking about predictions and Dublin and Kerry and some greats were on the panel. Uh, not once was a draw referenced. Not once was there the, the possibility or even the whisper of a draw. It was Dublin by however many, Dublin by this many. Even the Kerry men were saying it as well. Uh, talking about how young the Kerry side were, how inexperienced. And I think, Niall, I was speaking to you as well last week and you said, you know, as long as it's not a complete shut out and a complete walk for Dublin, it should be a good final. Uh, it wasn't. Yeah, no, geez, definitely A surprising not. game. No, it was a brilliant game, yeah. Mm. No, um, Kerry, they were, they were, like their forwards were, I suppose it took a while for them to get going, but once they did, they gave Dublin lots of problems, like, and yeah. it was brilliant to see it that way. As you were saying about the predictions, I think a lot of people, when they're asked to predict a game, they just have one thing in their head. They're like, one of these teams is going to win and yeah. I'm going to go with that team. Like, yeah. And I don't know, nobody likes to predict a draw because they're seen as sitting on the fence that way. Like, but I wouldn't have minded put a bet on it, though, to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> in hindsight. What did you think, Eve? Did you have a favourite that you thought maybe for the men's? Um, well, I obviously going in, I think Kerry were huge underdogs, but yeah. you can never underestimate Kerry either, like, you know, so... Um, yeah, it was, it was always going to be a tough game, but, you know, Dublin were striving for their fifth in a row as well. So yeah. um, I think Kerry might be looking at it and thinking they might have left it behind them, in a sense, because, yeah. you know, obviously Dublin only had 14 players for, uh, like, I think, 40 minutes of the game. Yeah. But 
then you can think, you know, now they have the confidence and the belief to think that look, actually we can do it now. So mm. there's a lot of young forwards there as well for Kerry. They're a young team, so I thought it was something you know, like maybe I heard. Now I don't know if I'm right on this, but was it something like seven of them are 22 and mm. and younger? That's yeah. very young. There's a lot of very yeah. young players. Like Sean yeah. O'Shea is only 21, 20, yeah. and he was he was brilliant yesterday. Yeah. Like I was doing a stats piece on him this morning, and he was on the ball like 24 times and. He was picking up. He was playing centre forward, like, but he was picking up the ball in his own full back line at different stages, and yeah. and he took as well. It was another like he he took ten sh he took ten shots and scored yeah. every one of them. Like you know, there was no wide balls or anything. Like you know, so but there's a lot of young players that carry team. Like David Clifford is only twenty one yeah. as well. Yeah, like, he was. Guy was getting some terrible. He was getting some terrible hassle for a while, wasn't he? He was yeah. getting marked fairly tight, right, yeah. by by Johnny Cooper. Yeah. yeah. But, then I suppose uh, you had the other lads in to step up, like Sean and that around him that played well. So. Yeah, it was like, you know, they've done really well and they'll have that experience now of playing at Crow Park, you know, at a yeah, final, absolutely. Final I was, I was well. wondering about it before because I was thinking about, uh, well, I was explaining to my boyfriend at the time, uh, at the time, he is my boyfriend, I was explaining to him <laughs> at the time, <laughs> maybe not after this, um, he's from England, so I was explaining to him like the pressure of a match like this and the pressure that, um, you know, Kerry and Dublin would have been feeling, but I suppose like, from your own experience, I would find that, just say, if I was on the team, I would be less under pressure if I was Kerry because Definitely. I think Dublin was the, the team that had it all to lose and they, they kind of did. Like, I mean, yeah. you saw the analysis afterwards, you know, they did things that nobody were expecting, but there was almost a fake sense of confidence for Dublin. They're stronger, they're more experienced, mm -hmm. they have lads who've been in huge finals, who've had huge moments in finals, and then, you know, they kind of mess it up a little bit. Mm, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, like all of the pressure was on Dublin yeah. too. So that was probably, there was no pressure at all at, on at Kerry at all. So mm. um, yeah, like it's it's nicer going in as underdogs so sometimes because, mm. you know, the pressure isn't on you. So I'd say that, you know, Dublin were probably probably taken back, but you know, and they had like 14 players in the pitch as well. And then they didn't panic, like even mm. though I think other teams may have panicked, whereas Dublin just, they're just so cool under pressure. Like, you know, yeah. nothing fazed them at all. Like even in the last few minutes, they were down by a point, and you they know still they, taking their they were time, still taking like, their time. Know, yeah. I was about to fall off the chair. Because. Like I was so <laughs> nervous watching it. But like as players, if you're ever in a situation like that when you're playing something that's so important and so crucial, are you enjoying that experience? Because to be honest with you, it was not an enjoying experience. I did not enjoy watching that match, and I can't imagine how their family and how their friends and stuff felt yeah. watching that. But are, do you enjoy it if you're in something that's just that? ridiculously close. Did you enjoy the semi-final? I definitely think it's worse watching a match than definitely. it is playing because 100%. you, obviously when you're watching it, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. You know, you're there watching. Whereas when you're playing, you just have to get on with it and, you know, get the next ball or, yeah. you know, you're thinking about the next option or, you know, all that. So I don't think you have that time to think about it. Yeah. But obviously it's before the game when you're really nervous and, you know, you're on edge, I suppose, you know, leading up to a game. But when you're on the pitch, you know, you have to just get on with what's in front yeah. of you. Is that is that it, Niall? Is it just like a kind of a blackout, and you're only just focusing exactly, yeah. on what's coming? You're just focusing on the next ball, whatever you're going to do next. Like you know, yeah. I think it's definitely worse to, have to watch a game, like because you're just. I was watching Tipperary say in the Ireland semi final against Wexford, yeah. and it was the most nerve wracking I've ever experienced in my life. Like you know, really? Like, yeah, <laughs> honest to God, there was nothing like it. Like in a game, I think you're just. You're just so focused, and yeah. because there's always something happening, like there's always a ball going some way, and you're just you're distracted by that really more yeah. so than that. And I mean, it was obviously it was just a huge occasion as well, the All Ireland Final, and now that there's a replay on the 14th, you know we're gonna watch it all again. Uh, the All Ireland Ladies Final is on the 15th. Um, do you think that that's a good thing for the Ladies Final, having the the replay right before it again, or do you think it might overshadow what's going to happen the next day? Because obviously we're looking for, and you know, on a show like this, we're talking about, you know, play by play and we're in support of the 20 by 20 campaign. Do you think it's going to affect the audience numbers, the fact that the replay is going to be the day before? I think you can look at it two ways as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of supporters will be around and hopefully, you know, if it's a good result for the men, they'll come out and support the women the next day. Yeah. But, um, yeah, maybe as well. I think it, I, I think that it might actually help the women maybe because to you know if they they know that the men are playing on the Saturday, hopefully they'll come out again on the Sunday. But 
yeah, you see, you don't know, like it could go either way as well, you know, they could win and yeah. they could be out, you know, celebrating or, or, <laughs> or grieving. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd hope that it, it would actually increase the numbers, hopefully for the women. It'd be lovely to, you know, break another record at attendance again at Crow Park. Yeah. You know, last year there was, you know, up at, I think 51,000 at the All-Ireland Final, which was a record breaking for, you know, yeah. Europe women. So. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll increase the, the crowds. But. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of uh, oh, there's a little bit of jokes being thrown at the GA as well in terms of you know the money that they're going to make off mm. this semi final. I feel like the two of you just kind of clenched up there and like <laughs> we're not here to talk about money. Shut up. Um, but it is a valid thing, you know. They're going to make something ridiculous like twelve million on it, um, and you know. It's it's mad to think that that amount of money is coming in, but at the same time, only a good thing, I suppose. Now, what do you think for yeah. for the sport? Yeah, well, when the game was tight coming into the last ten minutes, you hear everyone just saying, "Oh, well, the referee's going to make a draw out of this now." Or it's really? Going, yeah. <laughs> so, always... see now, why why is as in like just to continue this on? I don't know, really. I suppose it obviously is a big like a profit maker for yeah. the GA for it to be a replay, like, but it's not as if. Like people could have planned that it was going to be a draw. Like that's yeah. just the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. But I suppose the GA wouldn't mind it the way it has turned out. Like you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's funny as well. Like you were talking about the kind of the result and stuff. I was reading the analysis pieces that you were writing on Sports Joe today. Um, I read a piece that Conan did on on McCaffrey, and <laughs> I'm just thinking like if I was Kerry, I'd be like right straight on to these types of articles that you guys write about like the amount that the players have the ball, the amount that they have yeah. possession, the amount that passes, uh, completion and stuff like this. When you're writing that, I suppose it's a kind of a two-way thing. Like when you're writing that, do you think that the players are going to be looking at that and then going, right, well, this is what we have to do now in two weeks' time to avoid all this? <laughs> I suppose you'd be hoping maybe that they might have a look yeah. because that's who you'd really be, that's mm. the target, like it's about them, like, but... Um, yeah, I suppose it's a it's a massive thing. Like really, as you said about Jack McCaffrey, like Conan had the article that he scored like he scored one three playing from wing back, and do you know it's not it's not a wing a wing back's primary job to be a, a scorer really, but he's just yeah. Like, so his headline was Jack McCaffrey touch map and stats show how easily he destroys the natural tactic to stop him. So, I mean, that's a great headline to read yeah. about yourself in general, though. Yeah. Have you ever read anything that's been written about you? Or, no, you do. You must read things that are written about you. Um, from time to time, but, like, if you're, you know, leading up to a game or anything like that, I, I'd stay away right from it, kind of. I I think it just distracts me from my focus, like, you yeah. know. So, leading up to a game, I wouldn't. Sometimes after, you know, mum and dad always get the papers and they'd be lying around the table, but, you know, I might have a scan at them and stuff, but... Um, leading up to a game, I definitely wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know, it just put me off my focus. Yeah, that. well, like, honestly, speaking to athletes over the last few months that we've been doing that, that is kind of the thing that I'm getting from them. Um, but I suppose, like, as a female athlete as well, you kind of want to talk about your sport and you kind of want to get it out there as much as you can. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, do you find that that's something that you feel obliged to do? Like, come on this show when the lovely producer gets in touch <laughs> with you. Um, but yeah, like, is it something that kind of is grand with you or do you mind doing it? Uh, no, I, d I don't mind really. Yeah, I suppose yeah. definitely like, lady sport is definitely like increasing and stuff, yeah. you know, so there there are more opportunities for women, I think, at the minute. But yeah, definitely you want to kind of promote it as much as you can. But yeah, saying that, you know, it has come on leaps and bounds as well. So Absolutely. hopefully that, you know, in time we'll be on par with the men and 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 that but yeah we'll just uh just have to see what so let's talk about australia what's going on aflw how did that even come about originally tell us about it um so i think originally last year myself and grace got um a message from the cross coders they mm -hmm. like uh, the recruitment um i think it was around july time last year yeah we got the message and they said would you apply for it so we kind of didn't really think much about it because we were still playing with Mayo at the time. Mm -hmm. And then after we finished with Mayo last year, we, yeah, we applied for it. Yeah. And they asked for a few clips of matches and stuff. And then around Christmas time, just before Christmas, we were in contact with four clubs because yeah. um, they'd saw our applications. And we were in contact with the four, but we were in contact a lot with Perth, with West Coast Eagles. And just from the get-go, like they, they were just so nice. Like all the four clubs were lovely. 
but West Coast Eagles, I don't know, they were just, they really liked the idea of the two of us coming out together to play. Yeah, I was going to ask, really nice. was that kind of like, were you coming as a package deal or were you both like going to be okay going to separate clubs or would you have liked it? Obviously you are going to be in the same club as your sister. Was that important to you? Yeah, like we discussed like obviously going out to different clubs and that, yeah. but if the possibility was there, we'd love to have gone out together. So when West Coast Eagles, they said they'd like the two of us together, we said, you know, this was nice. And they were, they were really accommodating, like, you know, they were just lovely from the get go. They're a new club this year, mm -hmm. the women. So they, you know, they said that they'd be there for, you know, Anthem we wanted and they were sending on clips of, you know, what the grounds were looking like. So they yeah. have brand new facilities this year and they were sending us on a lot of feedback, like Amazing. from the girls doing their training and then, yeah. then, you know, out in the new facilities. And I don't know, it just, they were very, very nice. And yeah, we just yeah. kind of, yeah, they were very professional as well. To, to kind of give us a lot of insight into what training is like out there and yeah. they give us a lot of detail so it was kind of yeah it was easy to kind of pick because they were just really professional with how they yeah how they sold it to us. And so are you going to kind of manage to be able to come back and, and play for Mayo as well because we've had Sarah on the show and, and she's yeah. doing that but obviously that's massive to be in one part of the world for six months and then in another for the other like you know your life is kind of I would imagine thrown yeah. up a little bit at that prospect yeah so originally like at the beginning we like we sat down and we kind of thought is this doable do you know yeah and obviously we're, we're very loyal to Mayo as well and we really enjoyed the Gaelic and we really we knew that we would miss the league if we were to go so mm. we knew we kind of saw Sarah out there this year and saw she got on and you know we thought we saw that it was achievable for her to do mm. so we yeah we just sat down with like the management and just discussed it really like with the Mayo management and they were they were like you'd be daft not to take it so you know, that was a huge kind of, yeah, that was huge really to hear. So, yeah, we, so basically we go out in October and we come back kind of the beginning of April. So okay. we will miss the majority of the league at Mayo, but we'll be back and hopefully in better shape then for the championship. Yeah. So. And what is the training setup like out there then? What is it that you're kind of, or obviously they're, they're sending you a lot of clips and stuff like that. So you have an expectation of what you can expect. Yeah. Um, how different is it going to be from your training and day-to-day -day life here yeah a lot different because you know as you were saying like up in Dublin I was working in Dublin as a teacher and yeah. we'd be coming down you know midweek for trainings and at the weekend so there was a three three and a half hour traveling down every weekend and then sometimes during the week so I suppose the thing that I was most keen about and attracted to was really just the professional setup and yeah. you know everything all the facilities and everything at your doorstep and you know you don't have to be you know traveling three or four hours to training so that was obviously a huge you know attraction so um yeah I suppose everything's just so professional they literally have so much people on their management team and you're being watched all of the time so yeah. I'm looking forward to that aspect and you know push someone pushing you all the time to be better in that. Are you nervous about the actual sport though like the actual game because obviously Gaelic football um, is very suited to yeah. the style of play but at the same time you know Sarah anyway was talking about the different elements that she had no clue of in terms of just mm. the difference in rules and stuff like so are you guys kind of brushing up on your clips and yeah so yeah we have been watching a lot of clips but you know looking at it there are a lot of rules to yeah. learn you know there's a lot like in gay like a kind of you know you're solo and you hop and I don't know what the yeah. <laughs> hand pass and kick pass they're the skills really but I suppose when you break and down there's a lot more that if you've never played the sport before yeah there's a lot that you have to learn as well so with AFL um, there's a lot of skills that we're getting used to now, even like kicking the ball, even the bounce, like it's so yeah. unpredictable because when you bounce it, it doesn't just come back up to you, it'll bounce anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, the ball as well, obviously, is something you have to get used to. But the whole physicality side of it too will be a lot different. You know, yeah. we'll have to start, you know, yeah, it'll be a lot more physical, I suppose. But I suppose you get used to it when once you start. And yeah. yeah. Was it an end goal for you as well? Um, or, you know, like in terms of obviously you're a teacher and, and you play GA to a really high standard, but um, you know, being professional and being a professional athlete, was that something that you kind of had in your eye line for your for your entire life? I suppose like as a child, you know, you kind of you always dream about being, you know, being a professional athlete or, you know, obviously playing at the highest level that you can. Yeah. Um, but I never ever thought AFLW would be on the cards, you know. Yeah. <laughs> never even crossed my mind. I didn't even know it was a sport when I was a kid. <laughs> so um no, it's definitely just kind of came across my line just in the last like two years really. Yeah. When Cora went out, I suppose she was the first Irish to go out. So mm. 
then Yvonne Botner went out that year as well. So when they How got on... How out there now? There's like... There's 15 with this cross coders that right. we're going out with, but there'll be five now for Mio going out this year. Wow. So all together, there's a few more, I'd say, that might be coming now as well. Yeah. There's a few going from Tipperary as well. I yeah. think Ashley McCarthy and Arlo Dwyer is yeah, going out that's right. recently as well. She plays camogie and football with Tipperary. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's becoming, it's definitely becoming a lot more common. Jeez, like, that's, that's right. A tiny yeah. little hunting ground for Australia yeah. now, it yeah. seems. Yeah, yeah. Ashmack went out last year as well, actually, yeah. at the same time as Sarah. She went to Melbourne too. So she really like, enjoyed it out there. And then now Orla Dwyer is going out too. But yeah, so it's kind be, of like it's it's becoming. It's growing, it seems to be. Yeah, growing, it seems yeah. to be growing. Do you yeah. think that that's obviously that's not going to necessarily be the best in terms of if people can come back and forth grand? Yeah. But like you know, even you were saying about missing the league. Yeah. You know, obviously your manager is going to be like, it's a it's a huge opportunity. You have to go and do that. Uh, but there's only so many Mayo players. Do yeah, you know? I know. Yeah, there might come a time where, like, there are so many Irish going out that there might have to be yeah. a decision made. But at the t at the moment, it's great that because so you can actually fit the two in. You know, I know you're missing the league, but you might come back then in better shape and fitter and stronger than for the championship. And I think that was that's probably something that you know would attract a lot of Irish people to go out. Yeah. And when they're when they're talking to you about like coming out and about where you're gonna play in terms of like your position and in terms of like your part within the team have they given you any indicator about that or are you just like put me somewhere and we'll <laughs> deal with it. I actually asked them, where would I play if I was to play on an AFL team? And they said, you'd be the stalker. <laughs> I said, I don't know what that means. Yeah, no, I, I, was, about, I was like, no, I was laughing a little bit, but does he know what that means? Because I, I don't know what that means. Don't so don't what know. would that be? Um, sounds, it sounds, it doesn't sound the best, if I'm being honest. I know, basically be like, like a half forward, I'd okay. be kind of playing. Um, you'd be picking up the loose ball where, when the forwards go up. Um, and... The stalker part of it, I think it just mean that I'd be marking a player that would be going up and down. <laughs> but right. you'd be just coming in off the forwards and collecting up ball and just basically doing a run up, run up and down job, really kind of yeah. similar to a half forward role with, with me, I suppose. Right, OK. So not as scary as it sounds. Not as scary. <laughs> <laughs> just go and be a stalker. Um, <laughs> and have you chatted to the other girls who've gone out like from Mayo, for example, about what their experiences yeah. are? Not, not just in terms of sport, but in terms of the lifestyle change as well. Mm. Yeah, so I was chatting to Sarah, like when she first came back, we met for a coffee or whatever, and she went through like what her typical day was like, and she just said she was blown away by the f professionalism of it. And, you know, it is it is a lot different to, you know, playing with me, I suppose, at home, because you have a job at home, whereas, you know, that is your main job out there. So yeah. all your focus is on the AFLW. So that was probably the, the main thing for her that she found was, yeah. you know, she, lo she loved the professionalism of it too. I suppose like recovery as well when you're in like Dublin I was just say working during the year it's really hard to get into an ice bath straight away or you know any that everything is there like after training she said you just hop into an ice bath or yeah. you know everything is there on your doorstep. So. There's no more long drives down the mail <laughs> on you. <laughs> just the flight over and back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so then we were saying about the clubs as well so we're in Perth which is over the west coast mm -hmm. and then there's one other club um, Fremantle which is just 15 minutes away. But then all the other clubs are like four hours away on a, on a plane. Yeah. So like Melbourne, Sydney, the, Melbourne have a good few teams. Sydney have a team, Adelaide. So there'll be a lot of flying, but yeah, yeah. it'll be, be nice. So. And what's the support like over there in terms of like, you know, we're talking about getting more people to the games here and, mm. and trying to get more audience um, and also just get more players in young as well. Um, but what what's the setup like over there in terms of like, do you have a huge following of people that turn up for the actual matches or has there been any indicator of that? Yeah, so I don't know a whole pile yet I suppose yeah. until you get out there but from what I've heard and what the, the girls and the team have been saying, you know, there is a lot of sport and yeah. that is their main sport out there. That and actually cricket is a big big right. sport out there. So yeah, they that would be their main sport. So they would have a lot of following. Yeah. Um there's a lot of Irish people out there as well. There so is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's yeah, there's that too I suppose. But yeah. There seems to be a lot, like at the matches, it'd be, you know, 10,000 at games, you know, at yes. every game. Whereas, you know, our semi-final, like we were delighted to have 10,000. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. But that would be a consistent mm. figure at every game, yeah. So you'll head out in October and then how long will you have to kind of adjust? Yeah, so we're going out the 21st-ish, I think. We yeah. haven't the flights booked yet, but we're going out around that date. And then we... Basically, they've asked us to come out a little bit earlier, so they'll do one-to-one -one sessions with me and Grace because we're new to the sport. And yeah. 
So the level of support is massive out there. You know, they're even sending us over clips, you know, to be added here too. But they want to spend a week with us doing one to one sessions before we go out so we can brush up on the skills and yeah. and what we think is we're doing right probably isn't right. So <laughs> we can but there's brush only so up much on you can do until you kinda of get the ball in your hands and, yeah. and actually do it. Like. That's it. So yeah. they want us out as early as possible, obviously, just to get thrown into the game and just to get yeah. a bit of practice. And then we're home for Christmas for a few days and then mm. we're back again then till about April time. I was going to ask, are your family absolutely freaked at Australia? Stop. My mother and father are like... <laughs> are they see, good at? My brother's in Dubai, so there's only the three of us, so we'll be gone to Australia as well. Oh. So literally straight away, mum and dad were up looking at flights to, to try and come over. So yeah. Um, ah, yeah, they'll probably come over for a holiday, but they'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing opportunity. You can't like necessarily say no to it but I would imagine that yeah for your, for the family as well as for your club yeah. it's going to be kind of bittersweet as well yeah I suppose it is like it was a hard decision at the time I think but it was something that we had to you know we'll never get an opportunity like this again we yeah. were kind of thinking as well so um no our family like our uncles would follow us a lot they'd be at every game as well do you know our whole family are really into the sport so yeah. they were kind of like you'd be daft not to take it I would say having your sister with you though is going to help with the whole adjustment to yeah. to being there and stuff yeah definitely yeah yeah definitely that yeah it'll be nice to have yeah. her just to settle into the club even and yeah. do you know even just bounce things off you know when we're going to train and here at home as well you know it's nice to have someone close to like just to yeah you know bounce you things off you and your off. brother would be grand in Australia as well yeah, I'm sure yeah, <laughs> cricket <laughs> like kind of similar <laughs> Not at all. Um, right, I suppose I want to talk a little bit about the All Ireland final for the women. Uh, so September fifteenth in Crow Park. Uh, obviously, you have huge insights into what we can expect from that game. So, I suppose can you weigh in a little bit on what you think we're going to see on the day? Yeah, it's going to be a really good game. Yeah, you know it is like Dublin and Galway are two really, really good. They're strong sides. Mm. Um, it's hard to see anyone pass in Dublin. Like you know they're just so professional, like McBohan has everything covered with them. Um, their their play is really systematic nearly like, yeah. but they, yeah, they're very organised. So it's going to be hard to see anyone. But then again, like Galway are a really good side, you know, they're yeah. really organised. Um, it's going to be a really tough game. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, like we saw a lot of this with the men's, the whole like, you know, Dublin domination of a decade there was so much alliteration coming out in the news cycle in the yeah. in the couple of weeks leading up to the final but like you said yourself you're kind of sick of seeing Dublin dominate yeah. Nile, didn't you yeah. I'd say it's almost the same on the on the lady side of things yeah. like Dublin they're massive favourites going into it but people still like Galway were obviously very impressive in their semi-final wins yeah. so like it's going to be they'll have a chance like you know yeah. so there's always a hope that they might I think when a team wins a few in a row, like the Dublin men's won four in a row, the ladies have won, they're going for three in a row, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like you're kind of, if you're not from the county, you're looking for someone else to, to step up and to, to mm. win it. Like. Yeah, I can see that. But like at the same time, speaking from somebody obviously who, who has faced Dublin, who faces Dublin, mm. uh, when you say that they're almost like systematic, is it, is, it, is it a fear that people have when they face them because of how strong they are and because of that kind of yeah. legacy that they bring with them? Or would that just spur you on more? Like, are Galway just going to be absolutely going for it? And again, they don't have the pressure of the three yeah. in a row, I suppose. Yeah, that's, I think Galway are going to be well up for it. You yeah. know, I think they're, they're going to use that, you know, the underdogs tag, I suppose, as motivation as well uh, yeah. to get over the line. But, you know, they have, you know, the likes of, you know, Tracy Leonard and Roisin Leonard who are doing really well for Galway this year. And, yeah. Do you know Olivia Divoli in the wards like um, so they're you know they're experienced players they've been there a long time as well but yeah Dublin in terms of systematic they just know where each other are they're always there working off each other's shoulders mm. um, obviously Nicole Owens is a huge blow to them now yeah, as well having a crucial injury yeah. so there's actually been an awful lot of crucial injuries this year with Amy yeah. Mackin as well and yeah. Nicole Owens and I didn't see a lot of lads from from my club. There was nearly two lads in the last three years that done cruciate injuries. What's going on with that? Is everybody just know. doing everything wrong, or what's like, what's happening? Because it's, yeah. it's more prevalent in women because we wider hips. <laughs> that's that's it. it, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I remember my my mom did her cruciate in um, when she was playing squash, and I've never heard her scream as much. Like yeah. it was oh, just a wail, and then the surgery and everything like that comes. But I think it's probably something that every athlete absolutely dreads because yeah. the recovery on it is just so so long it's so long and even yeah. after the recovery then you're never like it takes a lot a while to build up your confidence again yeah. after coming back from a crucial injury because 
like you're kind of I suppose you the weight off it for such mm. a long time that yeah. you're, you're not used to putting like yeah. especially the turns and the quick little bursts that are in football and hurling and stuff yeah. like that you kind of it takes it takes a, like you have to be confident going out to play yeah. and yeah I, I, you'd find lads come back from the cruise shit and they could pick up a hamstring injury or something as because well. Because they're just putting the pressure somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, and you're, yeah. Like you're compensating that, so. nearly as well, yeah. yeah. It's not natural kind of the way you're doing yeah. it. And I don't know, It's it's. I think it's like the biggest fear that you'd have going out that you'd nearly do the cruise shit. It's yeah, like, totally. I'd always say it's worse than nearly breaking a bone because it's just the recovery and then the worry when you come back then. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's it's it. It's psychological, happens. I think, mm. as well, when you get an injury that impacts on you so much yeah. Um, because it's like you said it's not just about getting back out there and being like grand surgeon fixed it all good to go <laughs> yeah. it's everything that goes along yeah, with it as well it yeah it's tough and the rehab and everything like it's it's a long process one of our girls is after dinner cruciate as well so you know it's a long time out as well and coming into the winter as well it's hard because yeah. you have to have the motivation to do it yourself too yeah. so wouldn't wish it on anyone now. It's but also rehabbing as well. It's like it's a lonely, it's a lonely yeah. process. Yeah. Like you're there in the gym doing your own thing, and everybody else who's in the gym is looking at you like you're mental because you're doing the most ridiculous exercises that nobody is like. That girl's definitely not doing anything. That's a value because you're just like moving up and down on a ball or something. Yeah, yeah. But it is. It can it's be hard. really lonely as well. Yeah. Um, so do you want to give us a prediction though? <laughs> Speaking mm -hmm. about that in Dublin, it's tough. I am. Um, See, Dublin are going for three in a row, but mm. Galway will be re they will be up for it. Yeah. But I'm going to have to go with Dublin. Yeah? I think. By any particular margin? I think it'll be really tight. Tight. Maybe like two points. <sighs> I'm going to go with the draw, Niamh, because you were... Stop, you were, are you? <laughs> you were Here complaining we are now. about the lack of draw predictions <laughs> the last time. So. Better put on your bet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Straight down to Paddy Power. So you're going to go for a draw? Yeah. Right, Okay. I think they're fairly two fairly evenly balanced teams, and I think just like Kerry were yesterday, Galway will be, yeah. will be very fired up, and yeah. maybe they mightn't have as much pressure on them going into it as mm. well. So mm. I think they'll be really looking forward to it, and she'll give yeah. a rattle. I think it'd be good actually to get a draw. Why yeah. not have a replay for the women as well? <laughs> um, any predictions then for the replay of the men's? I have to ask. Mm. So. Dublin Kerry, I I honestly don't even know if, if I'm going to watch it to be honest with you because. I'm supposed the to be impartial because I'm here and because I'm I'm in this seat, but I'm from Dublin and yeah, it's it was intense. Like it was an intense match to watch. And if any of the lads on any of the team are reading the pieces that E wrote on Sports Show, I don't know what's going to happen. Like literally, I just don't know what's going to happen in the replay. Yeah. So I'm bowing out. I'm not doing I'm not doing any <laughs> predictions whatsoever. Now, what do you think? Um, I'd say you'd have to expect Dublin maybe to. Like they probably have more scope for improvement than Kerry. Yeah. I think a lot of the Kerry players played very well yesterday, mm. like played to their potential. And a lot of the Dublin, like their key men, maybe the likes of Brian Fenton mm. and Conor Callahan had fairly quiet games. Yeah. So like you'd imagine they won't have two quiet games mm. back to back. Do you think that they'll change what they do with the players that much in, in the replay or do you think they'll... Um, Keep well, it let's as say it is. Killian Spillane came on for Kerry and he made a huge difference yeah. scoring 1 1. He came on at a similar time to Tommy, Tommy Walsh. Walsh so, yeah. and the two of them linked up for the goal. That was terrifying. Yeah, the two. The two <laughs> Jesus Christ. The minute he came on, it seemed no, it as if Dublin yeah. got a little bit worried just Absolutely. the size he has and everything like. But I say the two of them lads would be pushing hard to mm. start the next day because like, they, were so, they were so good off the bench. Like, so yeah. mm. It's good for Kerry that they'll have that kind of competition driving them on the next yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. still, yeah, Dublin, I think they'll win by two points. Right, OK. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be tough as well. You know, Dublin did only play with 14 men for 40 minutes as well. Um, but then... I don't think they did anything with that, though. Like, yeah. Well, as in... It didn't seem, it, it didn't, much it didn't yeah. seem to make that mm. much of a difference, do you yeah. know? like just worked so hard. Like, even in the last mm. few minutes, it didn't feel like they were out of steam or anything. Yeah. Like no, they were, they were, looked so fit. They were so quick in the tackles, like, carried as a barely a second when they got the ball like, yeah, just, yeah. they're so fit that way the Dublin lads yeah. yeah so I don't know I think Kerry will have confidence now going into it the next day mm -hmm. but they do always say that the favourites always seem to I win in the replay so well. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to go with Dublin but it'll be tough game yeah. Tough game, yeah. Absolutely. And obviously everybody you know who's watching or listening you know if you are going to the men's 
100% you should go out and support the women as well because we want to get just as many people mm. at that match. Yeah, uh, it'll be a great game. It will be a great game, absolutely. Right, I can't let you go before talking about Camogie. Yeah, so the All-Ireland Senior Camogie final is on this weekend. Uh, Kilkenny are back again. For they're in their fifth final in the last six years. Now that's a bit much now, isn't it? That's like Dublin domination as well, isn't it? <laughs> but they've only won one of them. Okay. So Kilkenny, I, yeah. yeah, they've <laughs> lost the last two finals by one point to Cork. Shit. Mm. So Cork were beaten in the semi-final by Galway this year. Okay. Game, it was yeah. a brilliant game yeah. down in Limerick. Like the, I think there was five thousand at that game, which Maybe. was a big enough crowd as well. And it was a brilliant game. It was went right down to the end. I think it was only one point separated them at the mm -hmm. end too. Mm -hmm. And Galway, I think they were a bit like Kerry yesterday. They just, there wasn't as much pressure on them. They yeah. maybe weren't expected to win. But their players, like their forwards were very good that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they'll have a lot of confidence going into the final now this weekend as well. Kilkenny are slight favourites, I'd say, with the experience that they have. They're, like they've... They have some brilliant players, the likes of Anne Dalton, Denise mm. Gall, Grace Walsh, all these players, and they'll be favourites. But like Galway as well, they've been they've been fairly consistent. Kilkenny, Galway, Cork, they've been out on their own to treat them mm. as the most consistent Camogie teams. Kilkenny and Galway played in the league final earlier this year, and Galway won in Croke Park, so they'll have right. the experience of that. They won, I think it was two or three points. Right, so it's always tight. It's tight It'll yeah. be very tight, yeah, so that's bound to be a good game this Sunday as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. sorry, but like five finals in the last six years and only one... Once. That's pressure. That's yeah, I think it was 2016 they won, and it was like their first time to win it in like 20 years or something, so... yeah. They've been knocking on the door yeah. of Kilkenny a lot and I suppose, yeah, they'll be they might have expected Cork to be in the final again. Yeah. I suppose when they played Cork the last two years and Cork were probably the most dominant mm, team. Yeah. So Gala coming into it now, it's going to be a different challenge. The two of them are going to be all guns blazing, really, like yeah. you know. Definitely. Yeah. I watched that the Cork and Galway game. Like it was Eve Kilkenny, she was brilliant yeah. that day for Galway. Like she, absolutely brilliant. And she might have picked up player of the match. Aoife Donahue was Alan was telling me in the office that uh, she's from Galway as well mm -hmm. and they used to be playing underage, as Neve was saying earlier, the girls would play with the lads. Yeah. And she'd be one of the best players on the team. She's from Mulya, she's from and you're saying she'd be better than most of the lads like, and they'd find it impossible to mark her. Like. Amazing. So okay, can you have their hands full of her next yeah. weekend? It's funny, we've had like a few Camogie players on, on the panel uh, chatting and I think I spoke to you a little bit about it now before, like just the rule changes and stuff like that between, uh, or the rule differences between hurling and Camogie. Um, I suppose we, we get the you know, from like Laura Toomey and stuff like that, we get the players mm -hmm. insight into it. But I suppose like on the flip side of it, like what would you think as a hurler? Like what do you think about the discrepancies between the rules? I'd say the rules should definitely be the same as they are for hurling. Yeah. As Neve was saying, like the strength and conditioning has come on mm. loads in the last while and the girls are definitely like strong enough and fit enough to have the same rules. And the rules that are different are fairly silly as well. Like you're just not allowed to shoulder in yeah. is, that, is that just history though? Is that just because it's I think it's tradition probably, type of yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's there's obviously it's no contact, you know, but mm. like a lot of games, I know from watching some of the Kamogi, it might be more strict than ladies football would be, yeah. but yeah. I feel like there's there's not much play let go, like there's a lot of like all them technical fouls are blown up for and like that's what people were saying out coming out of the last two finals, Cork and Kilkenny that the whistle, like there was too many frees and the game wasn't let flow. Like, right. and I think that was why a lot of the Camogie players after that were saying that they wanted to, yeah. the rules to be updated in line with that. And yeah. I think the Camogie Association have, I think there's some sort of congress or something happening to mm. agree to change the rules. So Because mm. unfortunately, like, you know, we talk about trying to get people to matches and we talk about, you know, the participation level and stuff. But, you know, there is a bit about the fact that they are spectator games and we want people yeah. to go and to enjoy yeah. the sport. And, you know, if the ref has blown the whistle and it's not a free flowing game, you know, that's not necessarily something that people, unless they're like mad into it, would enjoy watching. Mm. The last two Camogie finals, they were like exactly like that and they were fairly low scoring. And because the freeze kept coming, the teams couldn't get into their flow or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then I suppose it gave a bad impression to people who might only watch Camogie once a year, like, you know, yeah. so they wouldn't be tempted to go out and watch Again, then when definitely it would be nicer, like just to have a more, you know, physical, I suppose, aspect to it because yeah. 
you know, th there's no free flow at all. Like, you know, no. but it depends on it depends on the game, though, a lot. Yeah. A lot of refs could let things go as well. Mm. You know, some refs are, you know, are very good for that, letting it go and they'll give you the advantage and go and stuff. So it just depends on the game, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. and I suppose you can't really blame the refs. Like, no. well, you they're probably can just, if you're a player. They're playing by the rules. But they're well. actually exactly. just playing by the rules, aren't they? Yeah, the refs seem to be fairly hamstrung by the rules. Like, and I'd say if they didn't give a free for something, like that's fairly harmless, but it's by the rule. They'd be probably given out to then, you know. Yeah. So, do you know of any hurlers who would say that the rules need to stay different because we're men and they're women and they need to do this? And no, <laughs> definitely not. No. I think it's. I was kind of just asking you that just to see <laughs> <laughs> what way you'd answer. Um, but no, so it's it's generally kind of considered from the player point of view that like, you know, oh, all's fair. If we're asking and demanding these kind of you know measures to make sure that things are fair in terms of everything about like about where we're playing and stuff like that supposedly you want the rules to actually fall in line as well oh definitely yeah, yeah. like everybody wants to see a more free-flowing game like and yeah that's definitely the way it should be right so predictions then Galway and Kilkenny Camogie final September 8th who do you think Niall uh say Kilkenny by two Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think Kilkenny have been knocking on the door the last few years, so I'm going to go with Kilkenny as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with Galway. Just <laughs> go. literally <laughs> just to play devil's advocate. Or a draw, why not? <laughs> um, well, it's been great to have you in. Thank you so much. Neve. it's so exciting to think about what's coming down the line for you. Um, well, you will watch the final though, won't you? Oh, with, yeah. the, with the women's yeah. and see how it goes. Yeah. And then you'll be in Australia, but you will be coming back, hopefully. So hopefully for championship then, yeah, at the end of the league, hopefully. But yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, it goes. Well, best of luck with everything. It's Thanks been great. Niall, play by play, first time. Will you come back? I'm sure if you'll have me, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see if we can get the time. We'll talk to Conan about it. Uh, thanks so much for listening and for watching as well. Jenny Murphy will be back next week. And we'll chat to you then.